As I was saying, people, in the book of the prophets, every time, every time the Lord sent a prophet, a real prophet, it was always warning involved. And but you know what he said? If you don't warn people, if you don't tell people the truth, you don't tell people what I put on your heart to say, it's on your head. And that goes to today. I don't care what nobody says. It goes for today and tomorrow and the other day. You understand? What else is Ezekiel? Well, you don't think the Lord got people this day and age that are watchmen, that are set up for watchmen? If he had watchmen then, he got watchmen now. You understand? You have to look at things from a different perspective than what you think. You understand? You see, I'm going to tell you why I can relate to this. When I read this, I saw myself. Because the Lord didn't tell me to eat the word. He didn't come to me just like he came to Ezekiel. But I'm going to tell you one thing he did do. He gave me a scroll called the Holy Bible and said, study it and read it and keep reading it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the more I read it, the more I ate it, the more it was like bitter to me. <laughs> but you got to understand what I'm saying. The things that, that's in this Bible that you read and then you see. Now you got to think about it. I'm going to just tell you something about me. He had me join the church instantly. And I started seeing a lot of problems within it. And I see a lot of problems within the world in regards to the word of God. He said, look what they do in my house. Now, I talked about this yesterday, people. I got nothing against church. I do. But what the God, God is against, I am against. And I got to speak what God tells me to speak in regards to a rebellious house, a rebellious people, rebellious nation, whatever God wants me to say, I'm going to say. Now, yesterday I said something. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is part of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You ain't got to be one of those people that have to put a muzzle over your mouth, like he said in the Psalms. Open your mouth and say, God doesn't show you things for you to just say. Well, it ain't my business. Uh, I ain't going to say nothing about that. You think God shows you something for you to shut up? Or just sometimes, I'm just going to show them, I'm just going to pray about it. Come on, y'all. What's the point? You got to tell people, just like I want people to tell me problems. You see, one thing about being someone who's corrects, you have to be able to take correction too. So I realized that also as a son of God, a man of God. Mm -hmm. You understand? I got to say what he tells me to say. And sometimes I got to listen to what people say to me. Why? Because what he said, he said, if you don't want a righteous man, there's going to be many righteous people in hell. Because of the simple fact, nobody ain't telling them when they have slipped up. He said, all that good works that they did mean nothing. Because all it takes really for one mistake for you to die in your sin. Yes, Christ died for your sins. But all it takes is one mistake and you can die in it. Let's say a righteous man who been doing good his whole life for 20 years straight. And he starts sleeping with another man's wife. Now, take the prophet that warned David. He didn't just let David slide. Even though David was king, he was like, hey, David, let me tell you a story. There was a man that had this and had that, and he didn't have much. But he had one thing that he loved and cherished. There was a man that had way more than he could have. And, you know, he took the, what the one man had and took it for himself. And David was like, who is this man? It's you, homie. It's you. He didn't care because it was the king. He didn't care. A lot of y'all are like this. Because, oh, he's a pastor. I can't rebuke a man of God. I'm going to tell you something. If God tells me to rebuke, I'm going to rebuke. Because if not, I'm going to get weaker and weaker. Mm -hmm. He told Jeremiah, I will confound you in front before them. Mm -hmm. Oh, because Jeremiah, like, I'm young, man. I can't be talking to older people about this. I'm a young child. Say not that I'm a child. Go to all I send thee. Say what all I tell you to say. You see, people, you're trying to save souls. 
not make people happy. If you love God, you better keep this in mind. You, you can't go through the world just saying nothing but good. You can read the New Testament and read that. He said strong meat is for people that can discern from good and evil. Milk is for babies. A lot of y'all are babies. All y'all see is good. Man, how can you live in this world and see nothing but good in everyone? That's almost impossible. I can't even look in the mirror and see all good in myself sometimes. How can you just see nothing but good and call yourself a child of the Most High God? You don't see this constant rebellion that's going on in this world? And you want us to just shut up about it? Like I hear a lot of people, just pray for Kanye West. Just pray for this person. Just pray for this person. Y'all shouldn't be talking about it. Why shouldn't I be talking about it? Why shouldn't I be talking about what people are doing that wrong? As a child of the Most High God, it's my job. <laughs> if they call themselves men and women of God, they better walk, start walking on pins and needles. You understand? Pins and needles. You know why a lot of people are saying that now, though? Because I'm, let's take Kanye West, for example. When he first came a believer and he started doing all these things. One thing I never saw him do is spread the gospel. I never saw him read from the Bible. And I'm like, this is kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? And another thing I said, he just started. He's jumping in, jumping in ahead of himself. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. I knew he jumped in too quick. Not saying he couldn't have been qualified, but he jumped into it so so quick, man. And everybody like, you should be just happy that he found God. Well, let me put it this way. The things that he's doing don't line up with the word. And it's kind of weird he find God and he starts Sunday worship right off the bat. Sunday worship. See, they worship the sun. Look at them, they worship the sun. Sun. Sunday But I can't say nothing about it. I can't say nothing about these churches that have been going around for years Who take advantage of people for profit That extort whole house. I can't say that You see Ezekiel was a nobody But the Lord he was somebody somebody the Lord called to do great things for him And he said my spirit same way the same spirit that moved in Ezekiel is the same spirit that moves in us today to say what needs to be said to do what needs to be done because a lot of people ain't doing it you think the church is, is not changing because people are saying what's supposed to be said no the church is not changing it's staying rebellious because nobody says nothing about it nobody's willing to do something about it but God has put the spirit in a lot of folks that's willing to call them out I call myself to be one of them. I'm not saying I'm a prophet or anything like that, but I put it this way, on whatever God wants me to be for the time frame being, and saying what goes for you. Why are you taking so many instructions of how things are supposed to be? The way I look at it, people like this, I'm gonna go to women preaching for a second. If a woman can pick up the Bible and go against scripture and say, I can preach, that means she can change anything in it. You see, that's the great deception. Well, times have changed and things are different. And that's how it used to be. And this and that. You know, if you can do that, you can change anything in the Bible. According to your imagination. And people are listening to it. Like I saw somebody uh, post a picture yesterday, a video about Winona Bidem. I think that's her name. I, I really don't care what her name is. But she's a prophetess. Now check this out. Check this out. See, it's a prophetess preaching on the Jezebel spirit. And then a lot of men came on there and hit them with scripture. You see, y'all just looking past, y'all just looking at the fact that she's a woman. Why do you think they're looking at the fact that she's a woman? Because they know scripture. <laughs> And they're using the same, all, everybody used the same verses. If you can't understand that you're being rebuked, something is wrong with you. Using scripture. 
Clear as day. You ought to saw how all the women got on offense mode, got in defense mode against this woman. First of all, <laughs> she didn't talk about nothing in regards to scripture. She was just talking about what she thought. But you ought to hear all the people amen in them. But you know, the uh, there are so many scripture in regards to women not teaching that it's ridiculous. It's not just that it's just mentioned one time. It's mentioned multiple times. Just like homosexuality. It's mentioned most of the times. And then you got homosexuals all in the churches. Let's go with what Paul said in Corinthians. He said, rather I come with the sword or rather I come with peace, peace or compassion, whatever the spirit tells me to do. And then instantly he was like, Hey, there are people in here sleeping with their father's wives, and y'all ain't doing nothing about it. Y'all just letting this go on. Inside a house called by my name, y'all just letting this go on. Y'all should have delivered one up to Satan years ago. But y'all just sit idly by and let this stuff go on. Don't that make sense to you? Why? Why do people do these things, people? It doesn't make any sense. They do it because nobody's willing to say nothing. Nobody's saying nothing about it. Everybody just, well, it's okay. It's okay. No, it ain't okay. No, it ain't okay, people. A lot of things that go on in the world, wrong in the world again, is not okay. I don't care if you want to make it okay. I don't, I'm too, y'all too scared to rebuke folks or to say what needs to be said. I told you, the Lord has brought me to many churches since I became a believer. And I don't think he shows me nothing for me to just pray about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I got to say something about it. Because I want to warn others. So you got to think about these. These people have been preaching the word and the gospel for years. Like, I remember when somebody rebuked Joyce Meyer on the interview. And Joyce Meyer has been preaching for years. And the man told her, you know you're not supposed to be preaching as a woman. And this is exactly her word. She's like, I didn't know that. So what Bible are you reading if you didn't know it? How did you not know that? Maybe the Satan has blinded your eyes that you avoided any scripture in regards to yourself. And nobody's saying that. So she was openly rebuked. So guess what? If she don't change from her ways, if she don't repent, she going to hell. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Mm -hmm. She's going to hell if she don't repent. If she don't stop preaching. In the pulpit, like a man should be. Even the ones that's making merchandise of the people, charging them arm and leg to hear sermons. Oh, if they don't repent, they going to hell. You gonna see a lot of prosperity preachers ain't got in hell. You gonna see a lot of them there. What did I do wrong? I preached the word. I preached it for you. But you didn't follow my word. He said, if you love me, you keep my commands. And my commands are not hard. They ain't hard. It's just rebellious people don't want to listen to them. You can't judge me. Now, you know when normally people say you can't judge me? It's when they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. I didn't figure it out. Because sometimes I would do it. So you're trying to be a judge now. <laughs> but I'm telling you, deep down in my heart, I felt it. Every time. When somebody said something I was doing wrong, I felt it. I'm stubborn now, but the, the fact that they told me, it took root. Mm -hmm. And I make changes accordingly. I might not tell them, hey, you know you was right about that. I might be a stiff neck sometimes, but guarantee you, if that word was meant, to, meant for me, it's going to manifest itself inside me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm scared mm -hmm. of who? 
the master. <laughs> I'm scared of him. I fear him. <laughs> he said, fear not man, but fear him. Fear God. Fear him that can destroy both soul and body in hell. So I don't do this because I'm afraid of men. I do this because I fear God. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. You see, the, way, the reason why they can do this with no fear and wipe their mouths like they've done nothing wrong. Oh, God, like, like he was saying in his Ezekiel, they don't think I see what they do. Oh, I see. And I'm sending people to tell them what I see. So y'all might want to get on y'all job. I'm just being real. You might want to get on your job and start speaking what the Lord tells you to speak. Why? Because it's your job. Stop holding your tongue. Stop biting your tongue. You know, for four years straight, my wife used to tell me constantly, I'm going to be preaching to you. And for four years straight, I said, no, you ain't. For four years straight, I, fa I faced this battle. You're not going to preach to me. You're not supposed to teach now I could have been like, you know what, you right one, you right, baby. Just to stop the arguing, just to just to stop and just live peacefully with my wife. I could have just been like, you know, it's okay, baby. You can't preach. One day you will be preaching and teaching me. But I didn't. I stood I stood my ground. And then probably like last year, she's like, baby, you're right. A woman don't supposed to teach a man. Now if I would have just gave in to it. She would have went through her life thinking that she was right. And the thing is, a lot of people are like, it ain't about being right or wrong. Yes, it is. There's a right, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is the destruction. There's a way that seems right to a woman, but the end of thereof is, is the destruction. Some people can feel it's right to sleep with a lot of women, but the Bible says it's not right. So if the Bible says it's not right, I need to tell people who sleep with multiple people, you might want to stop sleeping with multiple people. You might want to stop doing that because the Lord said it was wrong. And I got to do what my father says. I must be about my father's business. You see, I watch video upon video from different people. They, they, they talk about sin like briefly. Then they go back. We all sin. Let's go back to prospering. Let's go back to other things. You know what I'm saying? You see, you better start taking this word serious. <laughs> you see, what's the old saying people say? Closed mouth don't get fed. Now think about this now. Think about that. That's a strange saying. But it's not. You can't eat unless you open your mouth. You can't be fed unless you open your mouth. To whom much is given, much is required. Well, let me tell you what God gave me. The word. So if he gave it to me, he gave me understanding of it, guess what I got to do? I got to tell people what I understand. Mm -hmm. Right and dividing the word of truth. You understand? And a lot of people don't. So if there's a right way, there has to be a wrong way. Let me pause and continue.